Hello and welcome to a series of videos where I take a look back at my personal gaming history. This is a personal project in an ongoing effort to make my hobbies feel like I'm being creatively productive, when really, I'm just really lazy. I'm really, really lazy. I'm not pursuing my life goals. Hey, who put that in there? Was that my low self-esteem? For part one, we'll be looking at my early gaming life, starting from 1995, well, Maybe not quite 1995, I would have been like zero, but probably a few years on from then, so when I was like three to maybe like when I was seven. I don't know the exact dates, but those are probably the dates around that time when I would have been playing the PlayStation 1. Before we start with the obvious ones, I just want to get uh, my first ever games out of the way, so it's hard to stretch my memory back that far. But from what I remember, I played Pandemonium, and I don't remember anything about this game other than it's an aesthetic nightmare, as you can probably currently see on the screen. Uh, when I googled this earlier to get some kind of semblance as to what the game was, I just got hit with a vomit-inducing number of colours and some very weird graphics. Um, also, Forsaken, which weirdly just got remastered for PC, I haven't played it. Uh, once again, I remember very little about it, other than you're some kind of spaceship navigating uh, some kind of tunnel-y area. I don't know, it's been a long time. Um, but that's a Six Degrees of Freedom shooter, and funnily enough, that would have been the first shooter I ever played. And it's weird to think that that's a genre of art I've not really picked up, a, apart from Forsaken, I've never really played a Six Degrees of Freedom shooter. So. That's a weird uh, weird bit of personal history trivia, I guess. I also played Odd's World Abe's Odyssey, which is a platforming game with stealth elements that I mostly remember for the unique atmosphere. Um, Odd World tells a story of a dystopian, I guess, future? Once again, I haven't played this in about 20 years. Um, but I didn't really understand the concept of stealth, so I don't think I got very far through this game. I was very young. Uh, also, I played Medieval, and I remember literally nothing about this game, except when I first saw footage of Dark Souls, it reminded me of Medieval. I don't know how uh, accurate that is, but that there you have it. Uh, and finally, Frogger 2, which is a simple puzzle game, uh, which is a remake of, obviously, the original arcade game Frogger, where you have to navigate your frog from one side of a busy street to the other. They turn that into an entire game with a story and everything, um, and I, I loved it. I was crazy about it. I uh, named my bedroom after it, I think. So next up, I'm going to discuss what's going to have some of the biggest games of the PlayStation 1 era that most people would have played, because I'm going to discuss platformers. And obviously, I played Crash Bandicoot and Spyro, and recently they have enjoyed very successful remakes on pretty much every console. But what I do want to go into more detail of, though, is my first Crash Bandicoot game was Crash Bandicoot 2. And I don't remember why I got Crash Bandicoot 2, but I do remember that afterwards I got Crash Bandicoot 1 for being good at the Doctors. Um, so that was nice. I played them out of order. And while I remember liking Warped a lot, going back and playing the remake, I am I now see that it included a lot of vehicle levels, which I don't particularly appreciate as much as the solid platforming levels. I also remember that I mostly played Spyro Year of a Dragon, uh, which is the third game in the series, and I got the first one later on and didn't really like it because it was missing a lot of the features that I was used to, and it just felt overall less polished, I guess, and I suppose I was growing out for PlayStation 1 by that point anyway. I also bought Gex, oh I didn't buy, <laughs> this is all my parents buying this for me, but I also got Gex, Enter the Gecko and Deep Cover Gecko, which are two platforming games which have not aged very well. Uh, I went back and tried them in an emulator quite recently, and the camera controls are disgusting, to say the least. But uh, Gex was also a game series which was a bit... Uh, I suppose the humour was a bit too grown up for me. I didn't understand a lot of the humour, because a lot of it was pop culture references. And going back, I still don't get a lot of it, because I'm still not really a pop culture kind of a guy, but also uh, it's all outdated now, which is very interesting, I guess. I remember enjoying the platforming, and enjoying the wacky cartoon world as well. Finally for platforming I want to mention the first Rayman game because I didn't think much of it when I was a kid. I played it, I enjoyed it, it was a platforming game, I didn't play it too often, but sometime a few years ago I remembered that the first Rayman game existed and every time I look at it I can't explain it. It makes me shiver. It, it really creeps me out and I don't know why. Do I have some kind of repressed childhood memory associated with it? 
I had a pretty good childhood, so I don't think so. Now I want to discuss racing games, and I actually had quite a few racing games on PS1. Even though I didn't turn out to be a huge racing game kind of a guy, I do still appreciate them, and I think it's because of my history. The first real racing game I remember playing on PS1 is Penny Racers, and I'm quite excited to look up footage for this because I haven't touched that game in about pff, 18 years, uh, so that's going to hold a lot of nostalgia for me, I think. Uh, but the game that really got me hooked uh, for racing on PlayStation 1 and one of the games that I still regard as one of my favourite games of all time is RC Revenge. And RC Revenge isn't a particularly well-known game from what I can understand, but what is a well-known game, and what is probably what most people played on the PS1 instead, is a game called Revolt, which is made by the same people. And I don't remember a lot about the history, I did look it up a few years ago. I'm pretty sure that RC Revenge is their spiritual successor to Revolt. For some reason they couldn't just call it Revolt 2. But it's interesting to know all the similarities between the two games. They re-released Revolt onto mobile a few years back and I played it for the first time and that was when I noticed the similarities to RC Revenge. And quite interestingly I thought that they were just ripping off RC Revenge and obviously that's not how it was. Another arcade racing game that I quite like to play was Circuit Breakers and that is another interesting one because while I don't remember anything out of the ordinary happening during my time playing that game, According to my father, I had some kind of weird episode during one of the water levels when we were playing it together, and I yelled at him to turn it off, turn it off now, please. And I don't remember that, so that's really fucking weird. Uh, but I don't remember much else about that game apart from it was fun and that happened. Another game I played is Roll Cage Stage 3. And I mostly remember that for the really interesting soundtrack, which I'm going to have to look up and listen to at some point, because I remember enjoying it, actually. But recently there was a game released onto Steam called Grip, which tried to recreate the Roll Cage um, idea. And I haven't played it, but I've had it on my game radar for a while, kind of looking at it. I might get it at some point, but I remember enjoying Roll Cage Stage 2. Over Stage 2? Stage 3? Actually, I don't know. I didn't look it up before this video, so I didn't write it down. I'll just edit the correct one in. Ah, uh, no I won't. Uh, I also played a lot of Wipeout 2097, but I was never any good at that. It was super difficult, and I remember uh, getting Wipeout the first game on emulator for PSP because I thought it was 2097, and never getting any better at it. So I've been looking at the Omega collection on PS4 for a while now, but the thing that's holding me off is, are the newer games any easier, or am I just going to be really bad again? And finally, for a more realistic racing game, Gran Turismo 1 and 2. Um, that was more my sister's area. She didn't really play many PlayStation games, but she did play a lot of Gran Turismo, uh, especially on PS2 as well. We'll get to that later. But um, I remember watching her play a lot of Gran Turismo, and when I played it, I liked to play with cheat codes on so I could have every car in the garage. I think the one I played the most was just the one with the most brake horsepower in it, which was some kind of Suzuki rally car, um, because I was a kid and I thought the bigger the number, the better the car. I remember it being insanely difficult to handle going around corners because it went ridiculously fast and was not tuned to do much else. I'm sorry, I just realised I completely forgot to mention Crash Team Racing, a very heinous crime. Heinous? Heinous? Heinous. A very heinous crime on my part. Uh, that is a game that's getting a remaster recently, and just hearing the words Ruse Tubes makes me very excited. That was probably my favourite level in this game, and I'm really excited to see what HD version of it looks like. I enjoyed the story in the free roam mode a lot, and I'm just really excited to see what the future brings for that game. Also, while I never played Twisted Metal, I did play a game called Rogue Trip, which was almost certainly a rip-off of the game, but that's the one I knew. Uh, and while I would play a lot more vehicular combat games on the PS2 era, uh, this was the first one I really played in the PS1, and I played it a lot with my dad. I have a lot of fond memories of playing that game multiplayer with my dad for hours on end. It was just it was just a lot of fun blowing each other up in these cars with these wacky characters and all that good stuff. So I never played too many strategy games or anything like that, uh, but one game I did find myself loving and I've played a lot of iterations of it since is Worms. And you know everyone knows Worms. It's uh, four 2D uh, little, little 2D worm sprites on a battlefield. Give them a bunch of enemies and they shoot at each other at range. Um, Obviously over the years they've added more weapons, they've made the graphics a little bit better, and I don't think that the very first game is the best, I think that uh, Worms Reloaded on PC is the best definitive edition of Worms. However, Worms on PS1 is what we had back then, and 
me and my family had endless hours of enjoyment playing that so I still hold a lot of nostalgia for that game and appreciate it for what it was. It never did do well as a 3D game though later on but what did do Worms 3D well was not Worms at all it was a World War 2 game called Hogs of War uh, this one's a little bit lesser known and basically it's Worms but in 3D and instead of Worms everyone is a pig and there are loads of pig related puns and it was a really weird and quirky game and the later levels were really difficult because you had like seven seconds to make your move in 3D so that's another family favorite as for puzzle games which I'm lumping in with this section because similarly not much of note here but uh, there was a reimagining of the Breakout franchise made by I don't know who. They're on the cover on the screen right now. Uh, but basically, instead of your normal 2D Breakout game, this one had a story associated to it. And the different characters had different bat-related powers or something. I don't remember. It's been a while, obviously, like I keep saying. Um, but another puzzle game I played uh, was Buster Move 4 which I find interesting because nowadays you can probably find that style of game as a free flash game or at the very least some kind of really cheap indie download but back then like any caliber of game you had to buy for like a console. Just gonna have to interrupt past Christian there and make note of the fact that those two games were not puzzle games they're more like arcade games but for some reason when I was a kid I always considered them to be puzzle games so I guess that's kind of why I slipped up here but there you go puzzle games I guess. So that pretty much covers all of the games of note um, in my formative years of gaming and if I've missed any I'm going to be really annoyed and they'll be in the description of a video. I don't think I have though because what I did when I made this video was I looked up a list of every single PlayStation 1 title on Wikipedia and I scrolled all the way down through them to try and see if I'd forgotten any. Turns out I'd forgotten quite a few. Um, it was very helpful when it came to my first ever games such as Pandemonium and Forsaken and stuff. Uh, I wouldn't have remembered those otherwise. I played a lot of PS1 games in my youth, so not all of them made the list here. But what I noticed while I was scrolling through the list was the amount of games that completely passed me by that, in my adult life, I can look at and safely say, I would have enjoyed to play that, but because I was so young, these aren't the kind of games that my parents would have bought for me. But it's just interesting to think of how these games would have shaped the gamer I've grown to be. For instance, I don't play many uh, JRPGs, but I missed all of the Final Fantasies, and that might be why. Um, another thing, I'm not a huge stealth gamer, although that's kind of changing now, but I don't play a lot of stealth games because I never owned Metal Gear Solid. Uh, and one of my favourites, I didn't realise Warcraft 2 was on the PS1. I can't imagine what capacity that game would be in, but hey, Maybe if I played Warcraft 2 as a kid I would have been introduced to the franchise decades earlier and I would have become a real-time strategy gamer. Um, I also missed Final Doom, Duke Nukem, Quake, Resident Evil, uh, all games that you, I can I imagine I missed because of my age. Uh, Tomb Raider means I never really played many adventure games which I'm about to try and remedy with Uncharted on PS4. Um, and Mega Man X3 to X6 which are a series of platforming games which I've never quite been able to get into. Um, maybe I would have been able to if I'd been introduced to them at a younger age. But other than that, that about does it for this video. Those are the games of my youth. Youth. Those are the games of my childhood and um, some of the games that I didn't play as well. Join me next time when we'll be going through the PS2 era. Uh, this was originally all going to be in one video but I started typing up a list of my most formative PS1 games and I quickly realised this is going to have to be a series. God knows how long the list for PS2 is going to be. No. No. Get out of here. I repressed you. I repressed you.